Good morning everyone. Welcome to my YouTube video today. My name is Laura Stranks and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Um, we'll get started straight away. I just, uh, I hope everyone's well. Um, we've got less than two weeks till Christmas. Today is the 12th of December. I'm recording this uh, video but it will go up on the 12th of December at 9am Brisbane time so you can have a look at it then or which you will be watching then when when um, I upload it my lights and decorations are up for Christmas we did them in the last couple of days I've done the inside decorations and we've got lights up outside as well love Christmas um, we'll get started on the box today. It's going to take a little bit longer than normal because there's quite a few bits in it. Um, there's three main pieces. We've got the box. This is the belly band which you can slide straight off without undoing the bow or you can leave on there and just slide out the bottom base. It's a double um, soap box. I've lined the insides of the, um, the little divider in here. There's a divider that's a separate piece, the box, the um, surround piece here, the sleeve I call it, and the belly band. And the belly band you can leave on there, and I shall put it back on. Um, it can slide, I make sure if you're going to put, decorate the top that at least one section of it is flat so you can slide it up and down. I've got this piece here up on embellishments. Um, in dimensionals, not embellishments. There is an embellishment on it. Little um, little bell, jingle bell, um, on the front. And this is the um, the what was it now? I've forgotten the name. Sweet candy cane bundle that I've used with the DSP. Um, you can cut these candy canes out with the dies. So that's my box, but you can leave the whole thing attached and just slide this out. Now I'm going to do a little bit different on my next one. I forgot to do it on this one, but it still works okay. You can either put a little thumb hole in the end here, or what I'm going to do today, I'm going to punch a couple of holes and put a piece of ribbon in there that you can pull out. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that on this one. So that will make it easier to pull out from down this end. Or you could just do your thumb hole. So we shall get started. Um, I've cut all my pieces and the sets I'm using for my decoration I've chosen these Christmas banners. I'm going to put a banner up the top of the of the box at the front. Then I've cut out from the um, cottage wreaths this lovely little bow which I use quite a bit. Um, in real red and I've got these leaves that I embossed in gold and they're from the Christmas banners set as well So I'm going to make an arrangement on the front down the bottom with that and the other greeting will go up the top So that's those we'll just leave those up there. So we don't get them lost um, The DSP is from the Bowers of Holly which at the moment is on the last chance products list if there's any left um, so hop in and get it. It's my favourite DSP out of all the Christmas ones. Uh, I did get a few packs and I can use it from now on, even next Christmas when it's retired. I still make Christmas cards. This uh, front piece on my belly band is from the Festive Foils. There's three different colours in there, which are um, Cherry Cobbler, Gold and Soft Succulent. But I've chosen this piece because some of this in here, this is real red on the flowers, but the darker pieces uh, match up okay with this. So I'll give you all the pieces. Um, they will be in my PDF up on my tips, Laura's Craft Room Tips and Tutorials page. If you want to go and hop in there and have a look, um, I'll put the PDF up later today. And also, if you want to go and have a look at my cards by Laura, there are uh, lots of ideas in there for cards, Christmas cards, little gift boxes and all sorts of things. So you can have a look on there. Love you to subscribe to my channel, um, Creative Gems. 
if you know of anyone that um, would like to hop on and watch occasionally I do a video once a week um, please ask them to subscribe um, I'm trying to get to 150 subscribers I way past my 100 I was I'm at about 140 something at the moment so my aim is to get to 150 this year so enough burbling on we'll go on to this uh, I haven't scored anything yet because I want to show you where to score and cut. So the base of my box, which is this slide out one here, in here, uh, and it's a reinforced, um, it's two thicknesses, so you, it's a lot stronger than normal. And I scaled this down from the original box. There was another one that I saw on a video years ago, and it was quite large for bigger soaps, and you needed a 12 by 12 cardstock. With this, I think I used three set, three sheets of this shaded spruce. Um, one for the base, one for the sleeve, and uh, oh, there's a divider in there. You'll need a piece for that as well. So you do you don't need the full three sheets, but you can get it all out of A4 and not 12 by 12. Um, I avoid getting 12 by 12 because you don't get enough pieces in a pack to do bulk items. So my base measures ten and a half by eight and a quarter, and I'm scoring it at one and a quarter and two and a half on all four sides. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'll show you all the pieces first. My sleeve, which is the wrap around piece here, it measures ten and a half, which is the same um, width as this, by five and three quarters. Um, and then I'm going to score that. I'm going to adhere the DSP onto it first. My DSP, and I'll do that before I start scoring anything. Um, that way it's got time to dry. But if you put it on first, adhere it down, it's easier to score through both. And when you um, fold it, it'll it, once it's dry, it'll fold better. So the sleeve cover, which is the DSP, it's 10.5 by 5.5. It's that little bit shorter on the ends to give you a little border on the ends this one here i did it in a different color to the base but this one today i'm doing um, the same color as the base the shaded spruce spruces in this um the leaves on the flowers so that's those two and then the divider which is in the center of the box to um, separate the two soaps it measures seven and seven eighths by three and a quarter, and I'm going to score that at two and five eighths, three and seven eighths, and five and one eighth. And I'll show you that in a minute. There's two little pieces in the base of the liner. Um, they measure two and five eighths by three and one eighth, and you need two of those. I've just cut that. It's the back of one of the papers out of the Bowers of Holly, just to make it a little bit different. And then my belly band, which I'm going to adhere the DSP on first and let it dry um, you don't have to let you could use snail if you wish I th I might use snail today because I find it gives you a better um, adhere than the Tombow we could put some Tombow in the center to, to do it down but around the edges I'm going to use some snail so the belly band measures nine inches by two inches um, and I'm going to put the DSP on first then I'm going to score it at one and a half two and seven eighths and I find it easier this to do it this way because you get an even marking on each side. If you go straight across and do your scores, if you're a little bit out, it's not even on each end. So you turn it 180 degrees and then score it again at one and a half and two and seven eighths. But we'll adhere this belly band DSP on first. It measures nine by one and a half and it's that it'll be a quarter inch um, border on each side. And once we've adhered it and scored it, um, then I'm going to punch the ends with this. It's a retired punch, but I think there is a new um, bannery type one. I'm not sure. You can have a look in the catalogue. I've kept this one because it's so good. Uh, it's called Delightful Tag Topper, and it gives you the little hole to put the ribbon through a nice fancy top on it. So that's what we're using. Then I've got some ribbon also that I'm going to use. So we'll just adhere these bits first before we um, do any scoring. Um, this one and this one can come off. I'll run around the edges with my um, snail 
seal, stamp and seal, and it's a nice new one, so hopefully it'll, I'll go around the edges with this because it, then it stops you, if you use glue and, and it misses a bit, it, it'll bubble up and leave a gap there. So I'd go around, but you could even use tear and tape on this, it's probably a bit of a waste, but um, we'll do that and then we'll put some Tombow in the centre. So long as the edges are sealed, you'll see it's, um, it won't bubble up as much. Just put some Tombow all over that. Now this is flush with the ends. And it's got that one eighth inch border. If you can line one end up like so, and even there, just run it down nice and straight and push it down. So we'll put that aside to dry and we'll do the scoring in a minute. Um, the belly band, I will do that as well put the put the pieces on I'll just keep my just keeping my measurements so I've got them there handy for the scoring and I'll do the same with this I'm just going to run some snail around the edge which these snails they don't always pick up the whole of width of the snail they're not Super good sometimes. This one's not too bad. That, and then I'll put a little bit of Tombow in the center of that. We've missed a bit over here, which I know it's going to bubble up. Should have got a new Tombow out. We don't need much today, so. I'll move up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put some more snail along that edge. That should be enough. And this will go flush with the ends, that same as the sleeve, but it'll have a quarter inch border on each side. So line up the first end like so and just drop it through so it's nice and even and press it down. So that's those two bits done. We'll get back to those shortly. Now we'll start with the box base first. Just close that up. Get rid of Tombow. Now this is a um, a double double thickness um, box. I'll just get my trimmer, and it's scoring at one and a quarter and two and a half. Put all that over there on all four sides. One and a quarter. Normally, if you're putting a lid on the box, you would um, cut a smidge off two sides. But this is a sleeve, so it's a little bit different. You don't need to cut the bits off because the sleeve is um, scored so it will wrap around nicely and it's you can just put your bow as loose or as tight as you want to keep it um, nice and secure one and a quarter one and a quarter is over there nearly hooked it I hope I did those others right I think I did when I talk I don't concentrate so much which I've got to learn to do <clears throat> when I do videos because I talk continuous, so I need to concentrate on what I'm doing as well. So that's all four sides. They look as though they're correct. I'll just double check that one. Yes, that's correct. Just leave that aside. We'll need it again. <coughs> Excuse me for getting croaky. It happens every time. We just have a mouthful of water. A, <clears throat> a bit of a sneezing bit this morning 
I was glad that didn't happen while I was in the middle of the video. Would have been a little bit embarrassing. That's the beauty of recording. If you do do a really bad oops, you can delete it and start again. But so far so good. We haven't mucked up any in all the time I've been doing them. So I've scored all of those and burnished. Now, with this, we're going to cut. And what we're going to do, we're going to cut three corner pieces. That one, that one, and that one. Same as you do when you're doing a reinforced box. Um, you're cutting the three outside corners. And the way you do that, you cut up. And I've got my long side facing me this way. I find it it's um, nice and even if you go this way. So cut up that one and that one. Cut off these because I've marked the crosses here. So you just go by what you've marked. If you go around and mark them all, that makes it easier for you. I've got two cut off there and cut off one here. So you end up cutting those three outside corner squares. And I'll just get a little tub here to put my scraps in. We'll come back and notch in a minute. So we're going to do the same on this side. Just move straight across from that first one, keeping the long side towards you. Cut off the two outside pieces and half the next one. Turn it around so that, that what you've just cut is away from you and you're on the other long side. Cut up here and those two off. If you do it in an order, um, like I should have cut up both at once, but I'm used to doing these boxes. And then just half of that one. That forms your tab to put your box together. So we'll go up this one, last one, and up this one. Just remember not to cut your tabs off. You'll cut the outside piece off because that will form the end of your box. And half of that one which will form your tab. So that's how it should look when you've finished. Now we're just going to notch all of our tabs and some of the other bits. So all your little tabs, these ones, will go around and notch. Notching just helps it make helps it fit better when you put it together. If you start off at a little narrow piece, um, probably about an eighth of an inch, and then just slither it up to the point where the score line is, and that will form a notch for you. And it just fits nicely. I'll pick up the scraps here. And this one. And that's the four pieces done. Then we are going to notch this outside, all the outside edge pieces. Just this uh, to that first score line. It just makes that, because that flap's going to get folded inwards. Um, and we're doing the ends as well. Just a little notch. Doesn't need too much. Especially if you've still got the score line there, you need to trim it off as well. I'm forever chasing bits of rubbish around. Because it annoys me to have rubbish all over the desk. <laughs> Excuse my... Um, OCD, <laughs> if that's what you call it. I'm not too bad, but sometimes I just think, why do you have to make such a mess when it's not that difficult? And I think that's it, yes. Oh, we haven't done this one, I don't think. Just a little notch there. So all of those outside tabs are notched as well. So it looks like that. Now, we're going to put I'm going to put the tape on first and then I'm going to show you how to put this ribbon so it gives you a bit of a handle. 
and as I've explained before, if you put it the way you folded it, if you make it like a little hut, um, sitting up like that, you're going to put the tear and tape on your um, tabs only on this side. I'm right-handed, so I'm going this way. My little trick with my Tombow. Just take the lid of your Tombow. Most of you would have seen this before. And just flick it off. So I'm putting... I want this to stay together because it's the soap in there is quite sturdy. So I want this to be nice and strong. Try not to be too slow today but it is worth it for a nice little gift um, the soaps I use are from a cheapy shop we have here in Australia called Stacks and I think they have them at Overflow there's a choice discount um, most of those cheapy shops have Tilly soap um, where I go they are four for ten dollars which is quite economical, and they're Australian made, which is another thing that I like. I think they're based down in New South Wales somewhere, the um, the company. And um, yes, you're supporting Australian made. So flip it over when you've done those four tabs, and we're just going to put a row on the, it doesn't have to be really close to the edge because this is going to get folded in on the four outermost uh, flaps on the base. We want a strip of tear and tape. I have got a little picture on the PDF showing where to put the tear and tape so you can use that as a guide. Right, that's all ready to put together. But before we do, we're going to choose one end, any end. And we're going to punch a hole. Now I need it just when you when you put it together, these tabs will go in and that will fold up like that. So you want the hole in this because this is going to flap down over the top of the ribbon on the inside. So you want the hole just in the center of this. And I'm going to mark um, the center so I sort of get it in the middle. Just pick up my bit of paper. That was um, three and a quarter, so one and one and one and a half, one and five eighths is half. Round about there. That's the centre. But I'm going to put um, like a little um, pulley handle. I don't. I think I want just to, I might just put them there and there. So that's round about in the centre. I could go a little bit further apart. And I've got my, there is a Stampin' Up! hole punch, but this one is exactly the same. It's about a 1 8 inch, um, or it might be a 16 inch um, hole punch. You don't want the holes too big. I'll go this way. I'll just go to the side of that a bit. Try and get them in the middle. Up, oh, I'm on. I know I'm. Now I know I'm on the wrong, but that won't show anyway. It'll be on the inside. I know I've done that wrong. My rubber. We want it up on this other panel, not down there. We'll start that one again. Around about there. I'll just do it either side of that. As soon as I um now I'm not sure how this is going. I needed a long arm punch which I haven't got. What I'm going to do is use my piercing mat to poke it hole. I don't really want the holes in that bottom section so I shall use this and my pick tool and I'm just going to eyeball either side of that so it's in the center one there and one there hopefully 
we can get the ribbon through. That's better. And that will cover it. So the ribbon I'm using is the satin edge driven. It's a gold ribbon. Very, very pretty. Let's see if we can get this through the hole. I think it should go through. I haven't cut it off the spool yet because I'm going to lay it flat at the back and I want just a bit of a loop. I'll cut that off. Thread that through there. I'm going to put some tear and tape at the back of the, um, the ribbon to secure it on. I don't want to tie a knot because it might be a bit bulky in there. Just poke that hole a little bit bigger. And if we sharpen this off, thread that through there, it makes it a bit easier. Shouldn't need that again. Now I don't want it too long. So I'm just I might just cross those. No, I won't. I'll put them flat because I want. So we're going to end up with that little loopy thing there, but not too long. Just enough to grab hold of. And my tear and tape, I shall put over the top of it all. Doesn't matter how it goes, because you're not going to see it. Ah, scissors. I'll put a couple of bits across it. It looks messy in here at the moment, but you won't see any of it once it's done. Might just snip some of that off. This is just the fiddly bit. If I'd have done it yesterday when I did my other sample one, we would be organised. I'll just put that across as well. So this ribbon's not going anywhere. You can leave the backings on these. Um, it's not going to matter and it'll probably make it a little bit more secure. Let's push that down. And that will go like that. And that's your little handle. That's not going to come out anywhere. And we'll glue that down when we've finished. Right, back to square one. We've done all that properly. I forgot that. I do have a, a long arm hole punch, but I'm not sure. I think it's in packed away somewhere in the craft room, which I shall get out for next time. So we can take the pieces off the backs of these tear and tape. Use my band aid on my finger today. I grazed my finger inside the laundry basket putting some dirty clothes in the other day, and the, the breed holes at the side of the basket it's just a plastic baskety thing. Um, the breed holes are quite sharp, and I scraped the top all the skin off the top of my finger. It's almost healed, but I thought I'll cover it up. So you don't have to look at it. That's my little bit of trivia for today. <laughs> Normally I don't scratch myself too often, not where it can be seen anyway. So I've taken the ends up and we're just putting those so that they're nice and flush in the corners, like so. So that's those. Then if we Pull these outwards. We can take these off. I'll do the two end ones first. Doesn't matter which way you do them. And this, I'm going to trim that little bit of ribbon in there because I don't think it'll show. I need my ribbon scissors. Those other ones are for cutting. That's better. Now we shall put that one down and that one down there's a little hole in there but 
I'm sure no one's going to actually I'm going to have to take the backing off that I think let's see if it'll stick yes it is sticking I thought I would have had to take the backing off you can take the backing off the ribbon ones because it'll stick to the piece that you're folding in anyway that one down and that one down and that's it just give it a run around with your bone folder to make it nice and firm and that's the base of your box all done um, except for the lining we'll do the lining next the divider so this divider that um, it's just a little extra. You can just put the soap straight in the box like it is. I don't need that one. I'll have this one back. And we're going to score at <coughs> what we've got here. <laughs> Two and five eighths, which is the little couple of little marks after the half. Score and then three and seven eighths which is the two little marks before four inches and five and one eighth which is two marks after the five that's that piece done then all we're going to do we're going to do a mountain fold first or whichever way you go you can do valley it just goes valley, mountain, valley, or mountain, valley, mountain. Three opposites. So you form a little, uh, like a divider in the centre. Like so. And that will just sit straight in there. It doesn't have to be um, stuck down. You can, I might just put a little bit of glue in the centre of this to hold it together. Doesn't need much. It does hold up by itself. And before I put it in the box, I'm going to put the linings on those as well. They're much easier to get in than doing them after. It's a little bit long, so I might just trim, trim that one off. One's a little bit longer than the other. This just needs a smidge off. Might be my measurements. I'll just take a smidge off this one. This is the beauty of doing it before you put it in there or before you glue it all. So that's fitting in there nicely. Could have had a little bit more off. I might just take another smidge off just a little bit long I think I've got one side a bit longer than the other but the, it does fit in there just adjust I might I'll have a look at the PDF and just adjust those measurements if it needs to that one goes there I know one's a little bit wider than the other but I'll check the measurements before I put it in so these ones I might just use my snail because my Tombow is just about run out forgot to check it I could get another one out perhaps the cupboard but we'll put these in one on there Could have used the other side of that DSP but I thought I had enough flowers on the front and it's just something it's a bit of a motley pattern which is quite nice so that's that and then that will just sit straight in there that's your divider um, I can show you the soaps fit in there Just like so I can see that and I'll adjust the score measurements on the PDF 
because I can see this side is a bit wider than this that's why I had to trim that other one and just a fraction out with my scoring but it still fits with what's there but I will fix it for you so that's that piece done we'll come back to that now the sleeve is this piece that we stuck down earlier and we're going to score when I find my measurements we're going to score along the long side Let's move all that out of the road at two and one eighth Make sure you score and don't cut. Two and one eighth, three and a half. I hope I've got these measurements right. Six and three quarters. So you'll need your arm out for this. Six and three quarter. Nice and straight. And eight and one eighth. Is there that's that then you burnish these there's a an overlap at the back but you, I, I put the join at the back and it's not that noticeable because um your it all runs into one another so I wanted the the join at the back not on the front where you could see it this is quite thick with the DSP and the but it makes a nice sturdy surround so that's my surround and you'll see that fits in there nicely and I'm going to put some tear and tape on this to hold this so if you want if you do it with the with the base in here and then that way you won't get the, the surround to or the sleeve too tight or too loose putting it just putting it together without judging it onto the what you're wrapping it around sometimes it can be a bit loose so that piece is going to go that way so the other side will be on the top along here so one on the top and one underneath with your tear and tape put that in i can flip the lid over the box over actually i'll turn it over now so it's got a bit more support um, on there to stick it down and take the backs off these do the two at once and if you just put one flap over bring this one across and you want it lined up on the edges and not too tight just loosen it a fraction your scoring marks will Put it in place and make sure it's nice and even on the edges and then stick it down and that's that and it still slides in and out nicely it's a much easier to pull it with the ribbon than just pulling pulling in the other way and as i said before you can always um put a little thumb hole at the top there just with a one inch punched half punched out so that's all of that now we've just got our belly band which we need to score and then punch the ends I find it's better to score first and I'll just find my scoring measurements belly band this one here and this is the one where I'm flipping so I'm going to go one and a half And 
doing two and seven eighths, which is two marks before the three. Turn it 180 and go one and a half and two and seven eighths. that then you can punch the ends so this is two inches wide and the widest cut on this punch is two inches so you're going to make sure it slides right in flip it over and make sure that these side edges are the same which I shall just straighten that up a little bit it's pretty good I always look at the back when I'm punching and it's a bit thicker, so you're going to need to push a little bit. And it comes up like that. And the other one on the other end. Slide it in. You could make it a fraction smaller than the two inches wide. That way um, it slides in a lot easier. I've got it just two inches. Push that right to the end and punch and that's our end bits then we can fold these and burnish this is the fun bit decorating with the ribbon on my first one with this um, I went back and measured because this side here I had longer than this side so it wasn't in the center can't notice it that much but I did so I, that's why I did the the two measurements one on each end because that way you know you're going to get the exact measurement hopefully this is correct in here which it's not quite I'll fix that my scoring's a little bit out there I'll have to adjust that just wrap it around on this one it's not quite the right measure I shall fix it for you the, the back measurement should be a little bit wider apart it does fit okay and we're going to put some ribbon around that which is here now what I did with that first bow I doubled my ribbon over um, I'm going to go this way, take that through, and I need it quite a bit longer than that. I think it was about 12 inches of ribbon for this bow, and about 5 inches, or maybe a bit less for the, the other one. I'll just measure this, make sure I've got plenty on there to make a bow. A bit more maybe a bit more than 12 inches cut that off there I'll just measure it for you it's about 21 inches oh that's because I've got it double if you just do a single um, single ribbon which you can do then you wouldn't need that much. I cut it in half and then I'm going to do two bows two or two two lots together. I'll thread that back through there and the same on this side. I'll just fix the points on that. And then we shall tie a bow. You can just do a single ribbon here. I do like lots of bowy, bowy bits. Hopefully we've got enough to tie the bow. Could have done with a little bit more. 
that will get there. Pretty good. Nice little fluffy bow. Spread all your ribbons out. And the bow doesn't have to come undone at all any time because the sleeve will just slide on and off or you can leave the sleeve on just trying to get that loop a little bit better uh, leave the sleeve on and just slide the bottom out the, the draw part out I'll just trim that little bit there and that's the bow on that then my decoration pieces which I have put aside Oh, that's right, I did put them up there so they wouldn't get lost. This here I'm going to put flat. Uh, it's a fraction wider than the box, but it's not going to impede on anything um, because I'm not going to take the belly band off this one. So I just want my dimensionals, which I did get out here. Oh, why am I putting them on there, Laura? I just said I'm doing it flat. <laughs> We'll leave that one for a sec. I'm going to put the bow up. Um, I'll put it on with some glue. I was thinking of doing the bow first. That's why I did that. Just a tiny bit of glue to hold it. That will sit nicely up there. That can curl down if you do want to pull your um, the belly band on and off. But I'm not going to pull it on and off. It's a wee bit tight, probably because of the way I've tied the bow. But I'm going to leave it on anyway. Then I'm going to put this together with some glue dots first. I'm going to arrange these at the back and then just snip the ends off underneath. They're almost done. I'll put one of those there. These are all just gold embossed. Where did the glue dot go? It's still on there. <laughs> That's better. And so it's not sticking to the bow because it was still stuck on my picture draw. And this one I'm going to put a glue dot on here. another one on here put them on the right side the plus side facing you if you're arranging something to the back and then they stick on just like so then I shall put a dimensional on the back of that I can put a couple on that you can lay all of your bits flat if you want to. Just cut a little piece off this. I do like my things sitting up nicely. I'm just going to sit that on there. For a little arrangement. I meant to snip those off before I put it on but we'll do them now. It's just that centre one didn't really want it hanging down that far and that is it. We are all done. That will slide and especially when I fix my scoring measurements it's a little bit tight because the score is not in the correct place. Um, I'm not going to take the belly band off. I'm going to use it to pull this, use pull that up and down. 
so that is it i hope i didn't take too much of your time today but i do love these boxes um lovely little gift we can put this little pull tab down this end so it's up the bottom end like so this one hasn't got the little pulley tab that's it from me i hope you enjoyed that and um, I shall catch you all again next week. I'll probably next week's probably my last video for this year, unless I get time to record one um, to go up straight after New Year. Uh, I am going on holidays for a couple of weeks, and after Christmas, after Boxing Day. So I shall catch you all again next week, and then we'll work it from there. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.